Oh, good morning. It's 10.30 in the morning. Uh, we're starting the Florida Digital Newspaper Library, and we appreciate you being here today. Uh, my name is Tracy Ave, and I'm the Virtual Reference Coordinator for Ask a Librarian, and we're bringing this webinar to you through TBLC, the Tampa Bay Library Consortium. And today's webinar, entitled Hot Topics, Florida Digital Newspaper Library, will be presented by Dr. Lori Taylor and Patrick Reeks of University of Florida. And today's webinar presentation is a tour of the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. This resource uh, for this webinar will review the resources and how to explain how to use it to best suit your, your patrons and students with over uh, 1.3 million pages of historic, thorough current newspapers, historic news accounts of Florida published from 1762 to 1885. Um, there's a lot of information here coming from uh, libraries across the state, with a lot of them coming from the P.K. Young Library of Florida History at the George Smathers Universities at the uh, libraries at the University of Florida, holding the largest collection of newspapers in the state. Um, the Florida Digital Newspaper Libraries allows users to search full text, browse page, Im page images, and browse and search by a map of publisher location. So there's um, a whole lot that we're hoping to learn today through um, Laurie Taylor and Patrick Riggs, and we really appreciate them uh, being here to present this information. Very exciting. Now, a little bit about the presenters. Patrick Riggs is the, is the chair of the Humanities and Social Sciences Library at the University of Florida, the largest library in the University of Florida system. He was previously chair of departmental libraries <coughs> excuse me, at the University of Florida and head of the New Earth Journalism Library. He holds an MS, MSLS from Florida State University and a BS in public relationship, uh, relations from the University of Florida. And his current research focuses on the news industry and news research archiving in the digital age. Lori Taylor is the digital humanities librarian for the University of Florida Digital Collections, UFDC, <coughs> excuse me, and associated uh, collections and projects hosted by the University of Florida libraries, including the Digital Library of the Caribbean and many others. She holds a Ph.D. in English from the University of Florida, and her current research focuses on building cyber infrastructure to build, preserve, and support digital scholarship. Now, a little bit about um, the, the content today. We're really excited about this. A lot, of, um, those, a lot of those who are attending today's webinar are Ask a Librarian staff. Um, others are, are just trying to learn more about this incredible resource. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the Florida Electronic Library and a lot of the content available through this, um, hopefully you've been able to discover how much um, you can really help your patrons and, and students whenever you go through these, um, these resources. There's a lot of different collections, and this is one of the most popular ones uh, with the staff who cover statewide hours and ask a librarian just because of the depth of information and the comprehensive coverage and so this is going to be a uh, great help for those attending. Um, uh, another thanks to Laurie Taylor and Patrick Reeks for presenting today and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Laurie. Thanks again. Hello. Um, thank you, everyone, um, for joining us today. Um, I can't see uh, if Patrick uh, also. Okay, Patrick's also unmuted. So Patrick's um, going to start uh, the webinar, and then I'll speak uh, near the end. Patrick. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Uh, and everybody out there who was expecting to have Lori do this, uh, don't be disappointed. She'll be doing a bunch of it later on. She's the actual brains behind this thing. I'm just a voice that they recruited. So. Uh, uh, but I want to say thanks to Tracy and uh, welcome everybody for joining the webinar today. Uh, thanks to the Tampa Bay Library Consortium for uh, arranging and, and hosting the presentation. Hopefully by the, by the end of the presentation and the Q&A we'll be able to 
answer most of the questions that folks have about using the resource and, uh, uh, and gives us a good opportunity to get this information out there. Assuming the technology is working correctly, you should be looking at a slide that provides the URL to the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. Okay, Lori, next slide. Okay, we'll go ahead and just uh, we'll do some inter introductions here, although Tracy did a pretty good job of that. Uh, maybe go down the list. So, Lori, if you want to go ahead and uh, we maybe are going to repeat some of what Tracy said. but. Yeah, so, hello everyone again. Um, I'm Lori Taylor. I'm the Digital Humanities and Outreach Librarian for all of the digital collections supported by the University of Florida, including the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. Okay, thanks. And, and, uh, and like Tracy said, I'm Patrick Rakes. I'm the Chair of the Humanities and Social Sciences Library here at UF. Uh, people familiar with UF might uh, recognize it more as Library West is kind of the common name that's used here. Um, I call it the, the main library on campus, but not everybody agrees with that. But, uh, but that's, what, that's, that's my view of the world. Um, previously, I was the journalism librarian, ran the New Hearth Journalism Library uh, here on campus and chaired the departmental libraries and still kind of serve as the newspaper specialist for UF, although there's a bunch of people here that, uh, that know about this stuff as well. Um, two of the other contributors to the presentation, and, and while they're not speaking today, we wanted to make sure that we include was Colleen Seal. He's a reference librarian here in Library West, and she's the person that uh, uh, ends up with, if you, if you click the Contact Us button at the bottom of any of the U, UFDC pages or the Florida Digital Newspaper Library pages, uh, Colleen is the one that initially gets those questions and then triages them out to the, to the relevant people. And uh, also Lois Widmer, who's the uh, uh, Chair of the Digital Services and Shared Collections here on campus, which um, covers a whole lot of stuff. I think Lois would agree with that. Um, but one of the things that it does cover is uh, UF Digital Collections, which uh, also includes, obviously, the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. Uh, the webinar was also created with support from some other folks. Will Canova uh, coordinates the digital ingest and imaging of newspapers within digital services and shared collections. Uh, a lot of the meat and potatoes of actually making this stuff available uh, and, and getting it into the system. And then Mark Sullivan is the head of digital development and web services, so it plays a real vital role as well. Um, and all these folks share responsibilities for the support and the development of the Florida Digital Newspaper Library uh, and, uh, and, and contribute to its success. Okay. So just briefly what we're going to cover, and again, Tracy kind of covered some of this in a little more detail, um, the agenda, what we're going to talk about as we move through some of these slides today. Uh, kind of begin by going over what the Florida Digital Newspaper Library is, um, cover the current status and the collection goals with a little bit of sort of the history of how it evolved to what it is today thrown in, uh, and then the contents of the uh, of the collection, and then some, some details of the actual functionality of the resource, uh, which I think is will have a lot of that good practical application for folks when they're helping patrons with the use of this or trying to explain to patrons how it works. Um, because it is really, it is, it's as time has gone along, it's gotten to be a really robust thing, and there's some really good uh, functionality that I think maybe a lot of people aren't aware of, and it keeps getting better all the time. The folks over there in, in the UFDC uh, uh, keep making it better and better. Um, then we'll cover resources for assisting patrons and sort of how to continue the conversation from the webinar on, and then we'll close with a question and answer session that hopefully as things come up into your, into your mind as we cover this thing, uh, uh, you can ask those questions. We'll have a chance to do some back and forth about that. Okay, Lori, next slide. Okay, thanks. Okay, so just kind of briefly starting with current status and collection goals. Uh, the FDNL 
currently has over 1.3 million pages of historic through current newspapers. And the Florida Digital Newspaper Library is accessed over 1 million times each month, which is a number I, I, I think Lori could uh, uh, talk more about this, but I think it's a number that continues to grow. It's really a, the, a, a really heavily used resource. Uh, currently, new issues of local rural Florida newspapers are added on an ongoing basis. These newspapers replace what you have formerly preserved in microfilm with the microfilming basically ending in 2005 and, and moving over to the digital process. So we don't microfilm those papers anymore. It's all digitization. Uh, the newspapers in the Florida Digital Newspaper Library come from libraries and other organizations throughout the state of Florida. The uh, majority are from the P.K. Young Library of Florida History, which is uh, one of the, one of the sub-collections we have here in the George A. Smathers Libraries at the University of Florida. Uh, it, it holds the largest collection of newspapers actually in the state. Uh, a collection and preservation effort that began in 1944 actually called for acquisition of at least one newspaper from each of Florida's 67 counties and continuing that on an ongoing basis. So there was sort of a, uh, you know, there was a process in place that was uh, uh, designed to try and capture this stuff. Uh, the library began to produce in-house microfilm copies of the Florida newspapers in 1947. Uh, microfilming at that point was digitizing, uh, mi microfilming and now digitizing 67 current Florida newspapers. Um, on a regular basis. Retrospective digitization is, uh, is now undertaken in-house when possible. Um, remains a challenge. There's, uh, you know, UF alone has over 30,000 reels of Florida newspapers, so you can get an idea of uh, uh, how difficult that process and how long-term and expensive that can be if uh, anybody knows anything about the, the time and effort costs involved in, in digital digitization specifically of newspapers, so taking that stuff from film and, and digitizing it is going to take, uh, going to be a long-term long -term thing, so there's a great deal of work to be done. The Florida Digital Newspaper Library historically has been funded in part by grants from Florida's Library Services and Technology Act, people know that as LSTA, uh, the grants program there from the National Endowment for the Humanities, National Digital Newspaper Program, and from the Institute for Museum and Library Services, IMLS, um, obviously receives ongoing support from the University of Florida libraries as well, um, since it is housed here in the, in the actual work that's done to ingest. It happens at the University of Florida. Okay, so this slide, uh, as we look at this thing, sort of we get into the content of the collection, contents of the FDNL, includes historic through current titles, which I kind of made reference to on that earlier side. Because FDNL grew out of that earlier microfilming program where UF microfilmed local papers, that process when it changed to digitization in 2005 and evolved from the, from the microfilming to the digitization, um, you know, it continued that same sort of collecting idea but doing it, doing the digitization instead of the microfilming. So as a result, uh, much of that content that's in the FDNL is from 2005 to the present because that's when the really, you know, that sort of day-to-day -day digitizing started to take place um, of that set of newspapers. Um, I, I think I think that maybe is something that surprises a lot of people when that you know I think people have this idea in their mind automatically when they look at this this resource that it's a um, uh, you know, it's historical content, and there really is a pretty good mixture of both historical and, and current content in there. So, so, of course, while it's critical to preserve the current news, which obviously at some point will eventually become historic, um, there's also a very strong interest in, in the, the already historic news, the stuff that's out there that's, that people are looking back for, uh, you know, people doing genealogy or whatever it might be. So, whenever possible, UF has sought grant funding to enable the retrospective digitization of historic Florida newspapers, and a great deal of historic newspapers have been digitized. Um, 
but this has kind of been on an ad hoc. It's been as funding allowed, so it was sort of opportunistic and, and, and a tactical approach rather than sort of a comprehensive, systematic way of looking at it and, and saying these are the specific papers that we want to do and we're going to continue runs or that kind of thing. So as a result, there are also many historical newspapers in addition to that, that current content, that stuff from 2005 uh, forward that we talked about before. Uh, in some cases, there are really complete or nearly complete runs of, of a, pic, a particular newspaper title. Um, you can see on this slide, for instance, the Bradford County Telegraph from 1888 to the present, present is in uh, FDNL. And for another example would be the majority of like the Jack's Air News are in there as well. So there are things that, uh, that have pretty long comprehensive runs. The images on this slide show both of some of the historic and the more recent issues of the Telegraph. Um, for many papers, it may only be issues from 2005 to the present because there hasn't been that opportunity to go back and digitize some of the, do, do the back run of it. Um, so uh, there, there are quite a number of titles in here where you look at them and you see that it's that 2005 to the present coverage. Okay, so more on, a little more on the contents. In addition to the range and variety of historical and current newspapers, many of the newspapers themselves change a great deal over time. And I know anybody who's, who's tried to deal with doing research with newspapers or help patrons with newspapers, uh, you run into that problem quite a bit where there's been, um, you know, title changes, you know, five or six title changes over time. For example, some papers might change just a word in the name, and you look at, like, the Okeechobee Daily News drops the one word daily, and all of a sudden it becomes the Okeechobee News. Um, or others like the Gainesville Sun, where there's changed names and publishers over the years, and uh, the image that's up on the screen now uh, actually shows some of those title name changes, how it's changed over the years. And you get a lot of that where it's gone from a weekend, a weekly to a daily, or the weekend paper merges with the daily paper, and so it does really get kind of confusing. Um, and, and actually, Lori will talk a little bit later about some of the functionality of, of the FDNL, and there are some things in there that are really useful to not only just to view the papers, but to help patrons kind of figure out where those changes occurred and what continues a, a different paper or whatever. Um, and so still others, you know, there might be a change of location with some papers in, in Florida that move from Jacksonville to Tampa, and that's not always related. It's only sometimes that related to like a title and publisher change. So it can be a really convoluted sort of a difficult thing for patrons to try and follow, for anybody to try and follow. I, I, I do it, I've done a lot of it, and it still is a, a challenge for me as well. Uh -huh. So the different titles, publishers, and locations are important to support the use and research. However, this information, like I said, can really be confusing when patrons simply want their own hometown paper, which, which to them seems like it's been the same paper for many years, when in reality there might have been name changes along the way. Uh, Lori will talk a little bit more about this uh, in one of the other slides. Uh, yeah. Okay, Lori. Oh. Well, thanks, Pat. Um, so this is Lori again, um, and we're moving into the section on functionality. Um, so the functionality, of, of the complexity of dealing with newspapers uh, brings us to the functionality of the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. With the complexity of the name changes, location changes for publishers, and simply so much rich content, the Florida Digital Newspaper Library also offers a number of features to ensure the materials are usable. So on this slide is an image of the home page for the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. Here patrons can easily search by full citation. Uh, patrons can also click on the text search tab to uh, search the full text. Often when people are getting to the Florida Digital Newspaper Library um, searching full text, everything in it um, in the collection is searched through Google. So we often get full text searches um, that come directly from Google or other uh, search engines. Um, but once they're within the Florida Digital Newspaper Library, they, can, they have a number of search options, uh, and they can also browse by all items and new items. The browse functionality is really essential for patrons who are interested in something, but they're not always sure of what they want to find. Um, and so browsing allows them to serendipitously stumble across items of interest and to just browse as an end in itself. 
And more recently, um, we added a map browse. This is part of UOF's ongoing work to enhance the system. We conduct regular usability studies and implement enhancements whenever possible. The map browse shown on this slide uh, shows the standard map browse view. The dots are the central points for each of the towns where the newspapers are published. And this is really important when people are looking for news from their area, and they're not sure what the newspaper title might be, or titles might have been, um, and they're looking for papers from a general area, not necessarily just Tampa or just any particular city. Um, so this allows them to see all of the papers from the area. It's also critical for historical research. Florida used to have a thriving turpentining and Spanish moss gathering industry, and these were often located in the same town. Um, turpentine and Spanish moss are both very flammable, and that plus the frequency of lightning in Florida and just the sheer heat resulted in many fires that, that destroyed towns where the towns weren't later rebuilt. With the towns no longer existing, and over the years the name of the towns um, were forgotten, people wouldn't know to search for these towns. I mean, they don't exist anymore. So the, maps give, um, the map view gives patrons a way to see the papers from their area even for places that are no longer there. So clicking on one of the points uh, brings up this view, which shows the cover pages and the number of issues uh, for the papers from that location. In addition to the... And Laurie, I would just break in here for one sec. Yeah. Laurie, I just want to mention one thing there, because that, that map browse is one of the greatest things since sliced bread. It's something that I think that... that as far as patrons go and the questions that, that we often get, I was, I was waiting with bated breath for that function to be made available and it's a fairly recent thing and it's just to me just one of the really probably the neatest tool that's associated with the, with the FDNL. So, sorry to mute it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, um, and it, it really is popular especially with people, so many people know that they want something and they want something historical and Florida newspapers sound exactly what they're looking for, but they don't know more, um, you know, they, they want to browse and they want time to explore, and this allows them to do that. I, in addition to the functionality at the top level for searching and browsing, um, there's also um, functionality at each of the title levels and then at each of the, for each of the issues themselves. So at the title level, if, when you're in, when you're looking at one particular newspaper title, um, the Florida Digital Newspaper Library uh, supports many features. The images on this slide, uh, the one in the top left, uh, shows um, the volumes by date, uh, so people can, you know, see all of the dates in a nice organized hierarchy, um, which is often uh, popular when people are looking for. Um, students are often looking for those sort of teachers, you know, this day in history. How do I see what day it is? Um, Sometimes looking, you know, with the same goals in mind, people really want to know, you know, what's high catching, what's interesting, what's sort of big and what pops. And so they can select the volume thumbnails to see the cover pages for all of those images, for all of those issues, also organized by date. And it's a fabulous feature for students looking for a strong headline story for a class paper or, you know, teachers when, here's this day in history, let's talk about it class, um, let's have this as a writing prompt. So. In addition um, to the views at the, at the title level, there's also functionality at the individual issue level. So once um, people get to the individual issue, um, so this slide shows the page image view for one of the issues. Um, this is really basic sort of book turner, you know, familiar functionality. People can see the image of the page. They can use the go to drop down to select a different page number, and they can use the next, last, um, and back buttons uh, to, to page through the individual issue. There's also a zoomable tab, and the zoomable tab allows people to zoom in on the image to see a great, um, a great amount of detail. This is really important when you're dealing with something like newspapers, where the text is often very small. Um, if they're historical newspapers, digitized microfilm, the quality of the microfilm is often, you know, not great to begin with, and so people really need to be able to zoom to see. At the individual item level, um, so for each you know, for each newspaper issue, there's also a thumbnail view, and this tab allows people to see all of the pages for a particular issue. 
And then this is again great for students looking for, you know, a, something from a specific date in history. But maybe they're looking for a local interest column. Maybe they're looking for a particular columnist, you know, a woman's page, uh, news, uh, a woman's news page. And so this allows people to quickly skim it, look for advertisements over time, and it's really popular. Um, when people are browsing through, but also for specific activities in class. Also at the item level, there's the search tab, so patrons can search the full text of that specific issue. There's also the map it tab, which then shows people um, the location of the publisher on a map, which is great for teachers working, um, trying to integrate a geography into the classroom. And the all issues tab takes uh, patrons back to that top title level, so they can again see the list of issues listed by date, uh, which was shown on an earlier slide. Lori, can I add something here? Yeah. I, I can't reinforce enough how that citation tab, how important that can be and what a great piece of this that is. Um, I think it's one of those things that could easily be overlooked because people look at that and, oh, well, I don't need the citation for it, but there's information in there that I, I made reference earlier to those title changes and sometimes how difficult it is to, to know what paper was where, what came before and after, and that kind of thing. And it actually includes the succeeding paper, preceding paper, the publication frequency, and some other things that can be really helpful to patients when they're trying to kind of track to see where this paper has come from and where it went if there was a title change at some point. So I would, I would just reinforce that that citation is one of those things that you don't want to overlook when you're, when you're using this. Oh, and we have a question. Um, what style is the citation then? The citation tab is actually, we call it citation um, in hopes that most people will go to it since so many of our users are teachers and students. Um, the citation actually is the bibliographic record, but it's more it's in more of a human readable form. Um, from the citation tab, there are actually sublinks to go to the MARC record for it, the metadata, and that sort of technical information. But um, the first thing on the citation tab is actually the permanent link, and then it has all of the information on the newspaper as well as clickable um, subject terms um, and publishers, so people can also use that as a way to search and work through the collection. Um, so one of the um, more recent additions uh, also, many of the newer newspaper issues are now received as the uh, digital files that the newspapers uh, publishers actually send to their printers to create the printed papers. So these are born digital in the sense that they begin as digital files and that's exactly how we receive them. Uh, and often they're PDFs. So we have a PDF display which is used for, this, for these issues and it's shown on this slide. And again, the PDFs are, we're making sure that they're high quality PDFs so people can zoom in and see a lot of detail and use the standard PDF functionality. So this is another way that in addition to such a wide range of content and so many features, the Florida Digital Newspaper Library is always changing and growing with new issues added daily and new features implemented as resources allow. And as a, as a hardcore Gator fan, I'd just like to inject here that I'm not sure why Lori had to torture me with using this slide that shows Alabama 38, Florida 10, but, um, you know, I was hoping I wouldn't be reminded of that score anytime soon. So, oh, well. <laughs> Um, I'll make, that, make sure to update in future versions. <laughs> yes, um, this is uh, sometimes technical folks don't always pick the content the right way. Um, so that, that should be a winning uh, slide. That's right. Yeah. Um, so in terms of resources uh, for assisting patrons, uh, with all of this ongoing change, um, we still often receive the same types of questions from patrons. And these questions have remained um, fairly consistent over the past few years. So we now covered the contents and the functionality of the Florida Digital Newspaper Library, and so we'd like to share uh, resources for assisting patrons. So this slide shows several of our most common questions. All of these are listed on our help page, which is accessible from the help link in the top right corner of um, every page in the Florida Digital Newspaper Library. And additionally, patrons can always email us by clicking the contact us link, which is on the bottom of every page, and uh, as Patrick uh, noted before, Colleen, you know, is the one that receives all of those questions and responds. Um, 
So we wanted to go through a couple of the questions and answers, just uh, the most popular ones. So the first one is, where can I find additional years uh, of a newspaper? Often people will be looking for a particular title and they'll want historic content or they'll want um, more recent content uh, that hasn't been processed yet. Normally it's uh, historic content. So for newspaper issues that are not online, it's often the case that they're only available on microfilm. This is the 30,000 reels that Pat uh, mentioned earlier. But to be certain of this, it's always best to check the title in the city um, for the, pa the paper that the patron is requesting. As we saw with the Gainesville Sun, Daily Sun, Twice the Weekly Sun, the paper may be there, but it may be under another name. The confusion over paper names also leads patrons to misremembering the paper name fairly frequently. And sometimes patrons ask for a specific paper, thinking it's the only one in the area, and so it's the only one they could be looking for that might have carried the story that they're really interested in. But in some cases, patrons can find what they need in another paper. For other cases where the paper is not online, it really is most often available only in microfilm. So we normally recommend that patrons contact their local library to see about uh, the possibility of borrowing the microfilm using interlibrary loan so that the film can be sent out and they can access the film uh, at a local location. This is always an impetus for trying whenever we can uh, to find more resources for retrospective dis uh, digitization, but the, the scale of the problem is just so enormous with you know 30,000 reels at UF alone, but it, it's really a, a huge interest um, for people. And so um, how do I save an image is uh, another very frequent question, um, and we actually have this also on our uh, help pack, and we have screenshots, and so it goes through it. Um, the, to save an image, often people, what they really mean is how do I save a bigger image? And so the help screen takes them through, here's how you use the zoomable image, here's how you can get the biggest image, and then right click and select save to save the, the image. There's also a print, uh, a small light gray a print icon above every issue, and they can also use that to print um, from their computer, and, the, and some people, um, have their computer set up so they can print a file, and that's another way they can save the image. And then, can I print an image for personal use? Some people are very ethical, and they're trying to be very supportive and make sure that they don't do anything, um, you know, that's problematic for copyright. And they've gotten, you know, scared by some of the copyright news that comes out. Um, everything in the Florida Digital Newspaper Library and everything in the UF Digital Collection supports fair use. And the George A. Smathers libraries and so many libraries around the country have been very assertive in saying that fair use is protected. It's what libraries are here for. Um, and so fair use includes being able to save and print copies for personal use, for personal research. Um, and so that's absolutely protected and supported. And this is explained on the help page. And also at the bottom of every page, there's a permission. Um, if people wanted to reprint contemporary um, issues of the Bradford County Telegraph. Um, the Bradford County Telegraph has granted the University of Florida permission to have their materials online, accessible for everyone, usable under fair use, and preserved. But they still retain all of their copyright. All of the publishers retain their rights. And so we would just refer people to them. And we, we help um, that process. And so turning it back to Pat after covering our most frequent question. Okay, thanks, Lori. Um, yeah, and those are really what we perceive as really the most frequent questions that, that we get on our end, but we'd really like to know what other questions people are receiving in your libraries and maybe part of this process as we're at the and during the webinar is to know how we can provide some further support as well. Uh, some ideas there maybe are adding some questions to the FAQ or actually creating a full libguide that has more of those things that aren't covered in the uh, on the help page or something else. I mean, we're open to ideas about that. Uh, and to know what's needed, we really want to start that conversation here with the question and answer session. So you know, after this, always obviously feel free to continue the conversation by contacting us directly as well. Um, uh, but we'd really like to hear back from you during this session. So some other folks that are 
um, you know, that are also logged in get a chance to maybe hear some questions answered that are helping them as well. 